Okay. Akurasis Dekima, or video 10, from chapter 3, pages 23 to 25. This video is about the second declension adjective, and we'll review the first declension adjective as well. Recognitio. What is an adjective? So think about what you remember an adjective being in the previous chapters. So we remember it modifies a noun, such as the red hat. Here, red is modifying the hat. And we also know that it can stand in place of a noun in its substantive use. Good men do good deeds, or good do good. In Latin, we remember they must be the same gender, number, and case, GNC. We have seen them in first declension endings so far. So let's take a look now at a first declension adjective and noun pair quickly. So if we were to say my girl, it would be me a puella, me I puel I. In the genitive, me I puel I, me arum puel arum. In the dative, me I puel I, me is puel is. The accusative, me am puel am, me as puel as. Ablative, me a puel a, me is puel is. And then the vocative, me a puela, me ai puel ai. So now let's take a look at what a second declension adjective is. Now what do you guys think it is? It's probably like the noun, which we just went over masculine. It uses the same endings as the noun, just like the first declension used the same endings as the first declension noun. So right now we're just going to be dealing with the us pattern masculine adjective, so don't worry about the er endings of the nouns for right now, just worry about the us pattern. It's going to operate the same way as a first declension adjective, which means that it has to agree in gender, number, and case. So, let's discite, or learn. How would we say great friend? Well, first, what are the words we would use for great? Magnus, magna, magnum, and for friend, amicus, amici. So, both are second declension, and both follow the us pattern, so we should be looking at the same ending. So, magnus, amicus, magni, amici, Magni, amici, magnorum, amicorum, magno, amico, magnis, amicis, magnum, amicum, magnos, amicos, magno, amico, magnis, amicis, magne, amice, magni, amici. And remember, the vocative here does follow that exception and that includes both the adjective and the noun. So, cognitio, think about this. How would the word good sailor decline if we were to put that in a noun adjective pair? First, I want you to think about what is the word for sailor. Now, recall the word for sailor is first declension. However, the word is masculine, not feminine, because sailor is a profession, and many profession words in first declension are going to be masculine rather than the default feminine that you typically see in first declension. So, think, what are the endings for sailor? Nauta, nautai, masculine, sailor. Now think about the word for good. What's the word for good? Bonus, bona, bonu. Now, this, when we decline with nauta, nautai, we're going to use the second declension endings for bonus, bona, bonum. Now, why do you think that is? Why are we going to use the bonus, boni, bono, bonum, bono endings with nauta, nautai? The reason is because nauta is masculine. So that means even though nauta is ending in first declension endings, the adjective must use the second declension endings because that is how we make it agree with gender, number, and case all at the same time. So the declension endings, remember, are not going to be relevant in terms of having to match. So you don't have to match the declension with these adjectives, but you do have to match gender, number, and case. 
So even though nauta follows that first declension, any adjective that modifies nauta or any other word that is a first declension masculine adjective will use the second declension masculine forms to agree in GNC, gender number case. So here you have an exercitationes. Please fill in the blanks for the full declension of the good sailor. So just what we're going over, there's some blanks in each of these, and I'd like you guys to take a minute, pause the video, and write out the full declension of nauta bonus with all the blanks filled in. When you resume the video, we'll check your work. So now let's take a look at the answers to the previous problems. So first, nauta bonus. Now remember, we're going to be using bonus because nauta is masculine, so we're going to use the second declension. And again, remember, nautai is going to continue to be in the first declension despite agreeing with boni. So the genitive would be nautai, boni, nautarum, bonorum, nautai, bono in the dative, nautis, bonis. In the accusative, nautam, bonum, nautas, bonos. Ablative, nauta, bono, nautis, bonis. And in the vocative, nauta, bone, and remember, bone is following that vocative rule again of replacing the U.S. with an E. And then, nautai, boni. Lectio et translatio, or read and translate. So first, I'm going to have a few sentences, and I would like you to try and find the adjective and noun pair for each sentence. Remember to pause the video after you've read each sentence in Latin aloud, and then try to find the adjective and noun pair. After you've successfully found the adjective and noun pair, then translate each sentence. Agricolas paucos in agris habent. Now pause your video. Try and translate each sentence and find the adjective and noun pair. Agricolas paucos in agris habent. The adjective noun pair is agricolas paucos. These two are going together because they're both accusative, they're both plural, and they're both masculine. Now, even though agricolas ends in as, remember that agricola is a masculine word, and so paucos will modify agricolas. And it translates to, they have few farmers in the fields. Multa awarum virum non semper satiat. Now take a moment, and I would like you to find the adjective noun pair for, each sen for the sentence, and then translate the sentence aloud. Remember to pause the video now. Multa awarum virum non semper satiat. Here, the adjective noun pair is awarum virum. So here we have the greedy man. So much money does not always sate the greedy man. And we're assuming here that money is implied because multa is feminine. So bona quaestio, a bonus question. What use of the adjective is multa? Again, consider that we had money in parentheses. So think for a moment about one other use of the adjective we've talked about and what could multa be. The answer is substantive. It is a substantive use of the adjective because we have inferred a noun meaning and just left the adjective there. So here, we would normally write multa pecunia, much money, does not always sate the greedy man. And of course, here, we have left out money, pecunia, in favor of just having multa, which of course, we can infer that money is being used. So here, multa is standing in place of not just itself, but also a noun as well. Okay, that concludes this lecture. And of course, remember, you need to click on the Google Forms link, which is back on the main website where you clicked on this video. You can also find it in the description, and there also will be a pop-up link right now.
that comes up. So remember you need to click on that, make sure you write your name and where it asks for it in the form, and then click Submit. Thank you.